are joined now by Democratic Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Senator, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me, Lindsay. President Biden gave a forceful message this morning, placing the blame for January 6th squarely at the former president's feet. What did you think of his speech, and do you feel that he should have delivered this kind of message much sooner? I think it was both the time and the place to deliver this message. A year ago today, I was on the floor of the Senate as the insurgents broke in. I saw the chaos that was created. I saw the damage to our capital. Um, I'm from Virginia, so I'm right next door to D.C., and uh, some of the Capitol Police live in Virginia. I know how many of them that hurt. I had to uh, place grievement calls to some of the Capitol Police families who were killed. And the notion that a year later, um, there's still close to a third of our fellow Americans who somehow don't believe January 6th was all that significant or don't acknowledge what an awful attempt that was to overturn a democratic election uh, kind of blows my mind. Uh, I'm, so I'm glad the president laid it out. I know I think he and many of us want to move beyond the former president, but this former president keeps putting out the big lie. And the thing that I just found perhaps find most sad today, a year later, is that um, a third of of Americans, at least from the polls, somehow uh, accept that somehow that violence was okay or that uh, uh, that the kind of misinformation and disinformation is put out, they've absorbed it and that's what they believe. Though it seems that some of the, the third that you mentioned of Americans who seem to think that the violence was okay, as you just described, it seems like some of the third are actually your colleagues. I, I'm curious if you ever have those conversations with some of your own colleagues who now are trying to dismiss or rewrite that history of that day, who witnessed it, who were inside the Capitol building themselves. Well, I do remember there had been about 14 senators who thought they were going to vote to not recognize the election. When the violence took place, six or seven of them came to their senses and said, no matter how much they might want to kowtow to Donald Trump, they'd seen what that group of insurrectionist mob, they'd watched the violence, they'd watched the efforts to overthrow, in many ways, our, our basic democracy. Uh, and they changed. The, the seven or eight that still voted to, um, voted with the big lie, uh, my view of those individuals have changed fundamentally. So it's not something that you directly ever go to and say, hey, what are you thinking? What, you know, and try and actually have the dialogue. I don't know how, uh, we, we, we have a right in this country to have different views and, and I will argue strenuously uh, my position and everybody's got a right to argue against that. But the, the reality of people who lived through that day of violence uh, the reality of those who lived through and saw the destruction that was brought to our capital. Um, for them to, uh, for simply not wanting to get on the wrong side of the ego of Donald Trump to kind of somehow defend that. Some Democrats have said that Attorney General Merrick Garland has not done enough to hold the planners of the insurrection accountable. He pushed back against that in a speech yesterday saying, quote, the actions taken thus far will not be our last. In your view, what more should the Attorney General and Justice Department be doing? I have always been frustrated by how, how slow um, the wheels of justice in our court system moves in this country. But on this one, I'd rather make sure the Department of Justice gets it right, does it completely by the book, because anything, any further actions they bring, particularly if it's against some of the people who may have been involved in some of these groups, the Proud Boys or the Three Percenters or the... I would call them domestic terrorist groups. Um, they've got to have their cases solid. So while I'd love to see action move quicker, it's better to get the facts right. And lastly, Senator, I'm curious if when you look back a year ago, when, when you and your colleagues and staff were sheltered in the Capitol during the attack, you said that you yourself were on the floor. Did you think that anything would change for American politics coming out of that experience? And are you disappointed with where we are today? I thought in the immediate days afterwards, there was uniform condemnation of what happened on the 6th. And there was pretty much uniform condemnation of the role the former president played. 
um, I guess I felt after that egregious behavior that the Republican Party would have um, walked away from Donald Trump. Uh, the Republican Party's got a rich history in this country. Uh, I want there to be a strong center-right Republican Party, but that center-right Republican Party ought to be controlled by their ideolo ideology and their views, not as simply a handmaiden uh, to a former president who clearly has shown that his his own personal ego is more important than any substantive position. Senator Mark Warner, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.